Welcome you all to my class on HSC English first paper. Uh, dear students, uh, today uh, I will explain lesson 4 of unit 6. The title of unit 6 is Adolescence. As you all know, you have finished the first three lessons and in today's class I will explain lesson 4, uh, which is uh, the title of which is the story of Shilpi. And uh, by this time we have finished five units and we are uh, we have also finished less three lessons of uh, unit six so by this time you have practiced question answers uh, flowchart and multiple choice uh, question answers and other things as well and uh, i also discussed summary in one of my classes and uh, now you can easily understand that when we will read a passage so what are the areas that we will focus on and when I will explain this passage, obviously our focus will be on the techniques of, you know, uh, learning summary, uh, how to write summary, I mean summarizing. And we will also focus on how to write question answers, I mean answers of questions. Remember, each question carries two marks and multiple choice question answers. And for multiple choice question answers, what you need to understand is obviously the synonym and antonym of words, different words that we are reading and I mean from the lesson. And at the same time, uh, apart from knowing the synonyms and antonyms, you have to also try to, uh, you know, uh, extract the information uh, available in the passage and sometimes gazing, uh, you know, some ideas. So these are the things necessary for uh, getting full marks in multiple choice question answers and in flowchart you know I will explain uh, after uh, you know narrating this story and uh, after that I will uh, explain the techniques of you know flowchart in today's class as well and uh, dear students let's start our class on uh, lesson 4 the story of Shilpi and the story starts in this manner. It's a, it's a story of many girls, you know, Shilpi represents many girls of uh, rural girls uh, or girls of Bangladesh. And her story is not an exceptional one. This story you know, is comparable to hundreds and thousands of girls of our country. Shilpi was only 15 years old when she married in 2008. So Shilpi was married in 2008 and she was only 15 years old when she married. Marrying of daughters at an early age is a standard practice for many families living in rural Bangladesh. So that is exactly what I was saying at the beginning. Marrying of daughters, that means, uh, you know, getting the daughters married off. Uh, the, so. Uh, th that is basically the concern of the parents to get their daughters married off and marrying of daughters at an early age. So uh, getting the daughters married off uh, is an early at an early age is a practice. It's, it's a practice, standard practice. That means it's a tradition for many families living in rural Bangladesh. Uh, so there are many families in rural Bangladesh uh, who, you know, uh, maintain this practice. After her wedding, Shilpi joined a local empowerment group that provides adolescent girls with the tools needed to gradually change cultural practices. So Shilpi joined a local empowerment group. So uh, she married at the age of 15 and her marriage is not an exceptional one as I said earlier and marrying of daughters at an early stay, at an early age is a common practice in the rural areas of Bangladesh. So uh, Shilpi is not an exception. And what happened after her wedding or what happens after the wedding of uh, or marriage of such girls, I mean, adolescent girls? Shilpi, this is not simply, you know, uh, marrying of daughters at an early age is not simply a threat for the body of the girls, not simply a threat for their physical condition, but a threat for their psychological condition as well and it ruins their future after her wedding shilpi joined a local empowerment group that provides adolescent girls with the tools needed to gradually change cultural practices particularly those pertaining to early marriage and pregnancy now 
when a girl is 15 years old, she is quite unaware of different issues related to health, related to, you know, cultural practices and uh, marriage and pregnancy. They are yet to understand the, you know, importance of many issues, health issues, pregnancy issues, childbirth issues. So uh, that is why probably after the marriage, she will be joined the local empowerment group, you know. So, uh, the local, uh, there are different NGOs working in the rural areas of Bangladesh, you all know that. So, Shilpi joined a local empowerment group and the role of the group or the function of the group is to provide adolescent girls with the tools needed to gradually change cultural practices. So, what is the role of that group? That, that group basically provides different types of tools necessary, uh, you know, for the cultural, for the changes, uh, you know, or cultural practices. So in rural areas, not only in rural areas, in um, every corner of your country, you will see that when a girl becomes adolescent and, or, and when she crosses the stage of adolescence, uh, the society also has a kind of expectation from the girl. So this group also makes the girls understand the existing cultural practices of the society and the group also uh, makes them understand that how they can conform to the changes the society expects from them as they grow up. So that's exactly what cultural practices mean. Particularly those pertaining to early marriage and pregnancy. So, um, you know, the group also provides the knowledge regarding early marriage and pregnancy. Why? Because, you know, Shilpi is only 15 years old. So, uh, that is the reason, uh, you know, the uh, group or the, or the, you know, not NGO, it's not yet clear whether it's an NGO or not. But the group provides knowledge, information, uh, suggestion, regarding early marriage and pregnancy and she'll be joined there it was necessary for her so that is one positive thing you know that the girls have got the opportunity to join such groups even in the rural areas of bangladesh the group's activities include discussions on how to most effectively change behavior related to reproductive health as well as one-on-one -on -one counseling so the, the group uh, you know, uh, includes uh, the group uh, provides different types of opportunities and the group has uh, different types of activities is playing in the rural area. But uh, the focus is basically on how effectively change behavior related to reproductive health. So uh, the main concern of the group is to uh, make the girls understand is to let the girls know how effectively they can change their behavior related to reproductive health, that means childbirth. So, you know, they, they are only very um, adolescent girls. They are mere adolescent girls. So these adolescent girls, they don't have any idea about reproductive health. And uh, what is the function of the group? The group uh, provides um, information, suggestion, over here, what we see regarding the change in behavior of the girls when, when uh, they give birth to children. So the, girl, uh, the girls come to understand the significance, the girls come to understand the risk uh, of reproductive health. That means uh, the health when a mother conceives. So uh, this is, um, uh, you know, she'll be gets uh, from the group and not only that one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling so the girls might be embarrassed that is why there is the provision of one-on-one -on -one counseling so one you know trainer counsels one uh, you know girl so uh, that is the system that is the strategy the group is maintaining not to make the girls embarrassed it also offers peer-to-peer -peer support and life skills training that help adolescents say no to early marriage. So not only that, it also offers peer-to-peer -peer support, you know. Peer-to-peer -peer support means there is a, a peer, say for example, a parent peer can be or one or a peer consisting of two persons can be. This peer 
uh, is different from PAIR. Uh, so PAIR that means you know uh, two persons. So peer to peer support doesn't mean two persons simply. It means that a group uh, it can consist of you know basically it also consists of two, uh, but it can uh, it can be formed with three persons as well, and peer to one person can also do this uh, uh, you know uh, thing. So when a person gives support to another person, and when the support is given, that person who receives the support, if he or she starts giving or passing the information to another person, if that person starts passing uh, the information to another person, so this is basically the way peer support works, not peer support or peer work. This is peer to peer support. So when one peer is ready, this, this peer will provide the information to another person and that person becomes also included in the peer and that person also informs this to another person. So this is peer. So the group provides information to Shilpi probably or Shilpi and Shilpi's husband probably and the group will also ask them to share this with other newly married couples. So they become, I mean Shilpi and Shilpi's husband become the peer. So they pass the information to another, uh, you know, couple. And that couple, if capable of passing the information to another couple, they also belong to the uh, group, I mean, peer. So that is how it continues. Uh, so what's the uh, skills they're learning? They're learning the skills so that they can say no to early marriage. So for saying no to early marriage is very important. And uh, the girls also need to know the skills for that. The empowerment group is one of more than 10,000 groups supported by some local non-government organizations working all over Bangladesh. So, the empowerment group consisting of, uh, you know, sorry, the uh, group is one of more than 10,000 groups supported. So, there are 10,000 groups. And this, is, this group is one by some local non-government organizations. So who is running these groups? Who is fin financing this group? A non-government organization working all over Bangladesh. And these 10,000 groups are working all over Bangladesh, not uh, in a particular you know, village or a town. These NGOs work through Canada's Adolescent Reproductive Health Project which also aims to increase access to quality health services for adolescents. So uh, where does the NGO uh, get the fund from? The NGO gets fund from Canada's Adolescent Reproductive Health Project. So that is the project which is funding, you know, the NGOs working in Bangladesh. And they have 10,000, they have formed 10,000 groups. So that, you know, uh, organization, Canada's Adolescent Reprodu Reproductive Health Project uh, finances uh, these 10,000 groups working in Bangladesh regarding reproductive health of girls, basically. And which also aims to increase access to quality health services for adolescents. You know, uh, this group also uh, helps to increase access to quality health services. So they also work on quality health. They also work on the on their suggestions regarding quality health. And they're basically focused on adolescents, I have already said. So the group's work is basically focused on adolescents and uh, they are dealing with different issues on adolescents, but particularly reproductive health and, and trying to ensure quality health. During one of the group's sessions, Shilpi came to understand the potentially harmful effects of early marriage and pregnancy. So they organized the whole different sessions. I mean, the group holds different sessions. And in one of these sessions, Shilpi came to understand, Shilpi attends those sessions. And when she attended those sessions, in one of the sessions, she came to understand the harmful effects of marriage, early marriage, obviously and pregnancy. So uh, when she learned the risk of early marriage and pregnancy, she was also probably alarmed. 
While maternal mortality rate in Bangladesh has declined by nearly 40% since 2001, you know, maternal mortality rate means the death of the mothers at the time of childbirth and uh, it has declined. It's, it's a positive sign and Bangladesh has done a very tremendous job in this field uh, regarding childbirth and uh, declining maternal mortality rate and child mortality rate in both cases our indicator uh, shows that we, are, we have done a great job but still uh, we are uh, yet to go miles by nearly 40 percent so since 2001 our maternal mortality rate has declined 40 percent so it's very positive the rate remains high with 194 maternal deaths per 100,000, that, that means 1 lakh. Live births in 2010 dropping from 322 in 2001. Now, in 2001, 322 mothers died, according to the statistics, died out of 1 lakh. So that is the statistics. You know, maternal mortality rate, we are counting, we are com comparing maternal mortality rate uh, in different phases. Now, at first, the statistics comes, you know, in 2001, 322 mothers died out of 1 lakh. In 2010, it dropped and 194 mothers died out of 1 lakh. It further declined in 2015 and it became, the, the figure stood at 143 in one lakh. Now you see that uh, in 15 years, it has dropped significantly from 322 to 143. Uh, so it's a, it's a great sign that we are doing very well on this particular issue that the mother maternal mortality rate is declining in our country and uh, it was one of the goals you know of uh, you know our um, not uh, SDG uh, it's the, it's the, there is uh, the point or there is the uh, necessity of you know in decreasing or declining maternal mortality rate uh, child mortality rate a millennium in millennium development uh, goal mdg and now we are in uh, sdg so uh, the indicators in mdg we have achieved many of them uh, very successfully and this is one of them and the girls who uh, get pregnant are at risk of serious health complications so uh, those adolescent girls who become pregnant uh, they suffer from or they experience different health uh, serious health complications these include dangerous hemorrhage and fistula so hemorrhage means internal bleeding and fistula means also you know puncture of uh, tissues uh, so since their body is not ready since uh, their physical condition you know that adolescent means that they are not adult yet so uh, the body is also not adult yet. So the body is not also, the, the body itself is not ready to have another child in, its, uh, in it. So naturally, um, the, these problems occur, internal hemorrhage, fistula, a painful internal injury caused by obstructed childbirth that commonly leads to serious maternal morbidities and social exclusions. So a painful internal injury is caused so um, the girls suffer from painful internal injury internal bleeding and why because obstructed childbirth the childbirth the uh, you know is not easy is not uh, you know simple is not smooth uh, it's obstructed it's hindered it's impeded so uh, the body uh, suffers from different complications that commonly leads to serious maternal morbidities and it often leads to different types of serious maternal uh, you know uh, problems maternal uh, risks and social exclusion and when the girls suffer from this sort of problem 
um, you know, they become socially excluded. When Shilpi heard about those weeks, she invited her husband. So Shilpi came to know all these things when she joined uh, different sessions in, uh, uh, organized by the group. So when Shilpi heard about those weeks, she invited her husband, Rashid, to discuss pregnancy with a counselor. So uh, naturally, when Shilpi uh, came to understand these weeks, uh, she thought that it was wise to share these things with her husband. So she probably hesitated to share these things with her husband and that's why she took her husband uh, uh, to discuss with the counselor uh, regarding pregnancy issues. After hearing about the risks, Rashid agreed to delay having children for five years despite pressures from his parents and neighbors to produce an offspring. You know, when Rashid uh, talked to a counselor, Rashid was also convinced and that is why he decided to delay uh, taking child for five years because Shilpi was still adolescent. She was 15 years old and Rashid came to understand after a uh, conversation with the counselor that Shilpi's health uh, might be at risk uh, if she uh, gives birth a child at this age. So he was convinced to delay uh, having children for five years. But there was pressure from the neighbors. There was pressure from parents because the parents started saying, the neighbors started saying that why don't you take children? And not only that, they also uh, started criticizing probably as we see uh, in our rural areas, they start criticizing. Uh, and there are different ways to criticize such a couple. Uh, together, the couple met with a female healthcare provider who informed them about various family planning options available. And they also met with a uh, female uh, healthcare provider and that healthcare provider also informed them about different uh, family planning uh, options, available family planning options. So, uh, you know, these things are, uh, you know, available in, even uh, now, even in the rural areas of uh, Bangladesh. So, Shilpi's mother-in-law and neighbors continued to pressurize the newlyweds. So that is the problem. Uh, you know, uh, they came to understand, they came to realize, I mean, Shilpi and Shilpi's husband, uh, Rashid, they came to realize the problems of, you know, uh, childbirth at adolescent age. So they were convinced, but the mother-in-law was not convinced. I mean, Rashid's mother was not convinced. The neighbors were not convinced. And they continued to pressurize the newlyweds. They pressurized Shilpi and her husband so that they would um, take child. So this pressure continued. Deeply rooted cultural practices so, uh, and traditions was the rift between Shilpi and Rashid and their extended family. So deeply rooted cultural practices means this is the culture of our rural area that once a girl is married, the first uh, function or role she has to play, that she has to give birth a child, regardless of her age. So Shilpi is only 15 years age, uh, and that is not the concern for the mother-in-law. She expects her daughter-in-law to produce an offspring. So, and the neighbors also expect the daughter-in-law, I, I mean, the Shilpi to produce an offspring. Uh, as if that is the only role that a girl has in the society of giving birth to children. And what happened that uh, because of these cultural practices and because of these traditions, a breach, a misunderstanding uh, started between Shilpi and Rashid uh, and their extended family. So at one side, Shilpi and Rashid stand and on the other side, the extended family, I mean the father-in-law, the mother-in-law and other family members. So this uh, misunderstanding took place. And some of whose members insulted and criticized the couple and the family members, uh, some of the family members, they also criticized the couple saying that, uh, saying different things, you know, that uh, the language of criticism, it varies, but uh, you know, it, it's very insulting, it's very piercing, it's very painful for the newly wed couples. 
and uh, they incurred this sort of criticism from uh, the family members and from the you know uh, neighbors probably as well so unable to convince their close relative of the rakes shilpi and rashid returned to the council so shilpi and rashid uh, became helpless and uh, since they became helpless they also went to the counselor again and requested um, the counselor that what they could do now they took the help of a parent peer who has been trained to speak to other parents about adolescent issues so this time a parent peer was you know uh, involved and a parent peer was assigned the responsibility to talk to the uh, family members of shilpi and the neighbors as well probably and the pa parent peer means the husband and the wife is there so this parent peer would uh, come or would go to the house of shilpi and would try to convince the family members shilpi's mother in law and neighbors even neighbors eventually came to understand the harmful effects of early pregnancy on mother and child now when this parent peer came and they explain the risks uh, potential risks regarding childbirth at uh, the time of adolescence the you know family members were convinced and uh, they uh, came to understand the harmful effects of uh, early pregnancy on mother and child and uh, since they were uh, convinced uh, probably they stopped uh, pressurizing uh, the you know couple to produce a child today the village no longer pressurizes the couple their parents and neighbors now support them and speak out against early marriage and pregnancy so it's a very positive sign that today the village no longer pressurizes the couple and uh, shilpi and rashid are now free nobody is giving any pressure on them their parents and neighbors now support them and speak out against early marriage and pregnancy and their parents their neighbors they support them now and all they now speak out against early marriage and uh, pregnancy as well so we see a positive trend we see a positive change uh, you know in the life of shilpi and rushid and in the uh, social atmosphere so uh, this positive thing is also expected from every corner of our society now this passage as i was telling at the beginning uh, this passage can be selected for question answers there can be different types of questions on this passage uh, you know if i go to the beginning of the passage uh, so at the beginning uh, the question can be something like this that what uh, about the practice uh, or you know of uh, marriage in the local areas or what about the practice of adolescent uh, marriage in the local areas and what kind of problems the adolescents uh, adolescents suffer after uh, their marriage now uh, what is the, the the next question can be what is the function of this uh, group social uh, group that you see in this uh, passage there can be another question like uh, what about the uh, pressure and uh, the, a girl suffers uh, a girl experiences from the family members and neighbors to produce a child and uh, you know what kind of health risks a girl faces after um, uh, an, an adolescent girl faces after uh, marriage so how did shilpi and uh, rashid convince the family members and the neighbors Uh, to delay having children so what uh, kind of change do you see uh, in the uh, society where shilpi and rashid live so these are the very common type of questions that uh, you can have from here and regarding multiple choice questions there can be different type of questions on multiple choice issues now uh, i said at the beginning that i want to share some ideas uh, regarding flow chart so by this time uh, you you have uh, come to understand that what is a flow chart now uh, in today's class i will just give you some ideas about flow chart and next class i will uh, make you practice those things now flow chart uh, is a kind of item in which uh, you will be asked to 
provide five points on a particular uh, issue or particular uh, aspect. And one example will be given. And definitely this example will be taken from the passage. And you will be also, uh, you are also expected to provide information from the passage. So there are some rules uh, for writing flowchart that um, one example is given and you will write five more examples, uh, five more uh, points. So in total, it will be six. And uh, in the question paper, you will see a kind of box. I have not given it here in the next class when I will uh, focus completely on, uh, you know, uh, flowchart, then I will show all those things. But in today's class, uh, I just want to introduce flowchart to you, that what is flowchart. So, uh, in flowchart, you will be asked to provide five points and you will be given an example. And what, what is very uh, significant that all the points have to be provided from the text. You are not supposed to use any point from beyond the text. This is one. Second thing, you have to answer in phrase. I repeat, you have to answer in phrase. So you should have you should develop your ideas about phrase. So that is why I was telling you that I need a different class on, uh, you know, the flowchart. So in that class, I will again explain, uh, you know, different types of phrases and how to form phrases. So this is the second issue that the first issue is you have to provide five more points. One is given. So you have to provide five more on the issue which is asked in the flowchart. Now, you have to answer in phrases, not in clauses, not in sentences. If you answer in sentences, if you answer in clauses, you will not get marks. Thirdly, you have to maintain the, you know, uh, chronology. It's, it's flowchart. So you cannot provide the point that comes later at the beginning. And point that comes at the beginning, you cannot insert it later. So you have to maintain a kind of chronology, you have to maintain a kind of, you know, sequence uh, in your uh, uh, writing. That means when you provide the information. So that is also important. So, uh, and uh, there is one more thing which is important. You have to look at the example. So the example is given from the passage and it's uh, always suggested that you will start uh, providing points from the area after the example. Don't, uh, it's always suggested not to pick up points uh, before uh, the, you know, the text or the sentences which come before the example. That means if the example comes in the third line of the passage, don't take points from first and second line. It's suggested. But if the situation is like this, that unless you take points from first and second line or the lines that come before the example, it's not possible for answer to answer. Then uh, you can go, but it's not suggested. Uh, and I hope that you will get sufficient points uh, from the passage when after the example. So these are the issues you have to remember uh, so that we can start our discussion on flowchart in our next class uh, when I will um, discuss on uh, flowchart alone and I will show you that how to uh, make flowchart and how we can uh, do it uh, effectively in an efficient way. So remember these points that flowchart, uh, in flowchart one example is given in phrase, you have to provide five more examples and you have to answer the flowchart in phrase and uh, you have to answer maintaining a kind of sequence and uh, you have to answer taking points from the text so these are the things now what was the question over here and you have to also keep in your mind the question that uh, why five points in the flowchart about shilpi so that is the question you have to write uh, points about shilpi the first one is done for you so what is the first point married to rashid at the age of 15 so uh, there is another issue that uh, this, say for example, this uh, phrase is written in past participle. I, I mean, this is past participle phrase. So uh, it's better to follow the phrase which is given in, in the example that uh, since 
the example of past participle phrase is given, it's better that you also follow uh, past participle in your writing. But if it is not possible, no problem, go to other phrases. Because sometimes it's not possible to maintain the uh, phrase of the given example. So in that case, you can go to other phrases as well. So uh, married to Rashid at the age of 15 is the example. And the question is uh, uh, on the life of Shilpi or on Shilpi. So if we go back to the uh, you know text, and Shilpi was only 15 years old when she married Rashid. So the example comes in the first sentence. So we have to write on Shilpi. Remember this. Our points should be focused on Shilpi. So the next point can be Shilpi joined a local empowerment group. But remember, we are not supposed to answer in sentences or in clauses. So our answer will be like this. Joining a local empowerment group. So that can be the answer. Or joined a local empowerment group. That can be the answer. So we are focused on Shilpi. We are focused on Shilpi slide. We are not going to uh, going anywhere, but we have to write the points in phrases. So that's why I am not saying Shilpi joined a local empowerment group. I am saying joining a local em local empowerment group. And in the first uh, now in this slide, probably uh, you are not going to any more point on Shilpi. So you have to go to the next slide and look over here. You also don't get any point or oh, okay in the last sentence Shilpi came to understand the potentially harmful effects of early marriage and pregnancy remember this is a sentence so you cannot write the sentence you can start like this came to understand potentially or Shilpi coming to understand potentially harmful effects of early marriage and pregnancy or uh, she uh, came to understand or Shilpi coming to understand or simply coming to understand the potentially harmful effects of early marriage and pregnancy. So that can be the answer. So I'm just discussing these things that what can be the points on focused on Shilpi. So uh, dear students, uh, I, I just gave you the examples and I will expect that you will do the homework. And in my next class, I will start from here. I will start, okay, I, you know, giving the answers of uh, flowchart focused on Shilpi, but it's a kind of homework and I hope that you will practice this and in my next class I will show you all the answers but in today's class I just gave you the hints and I also gave you the ideas that how to write flowchart. So thank you very much for today's class and I hope that you will attend the next class after doing the homework. Thank you.